Good morning and welcome again to Cal Recycles 2020 California Tire Conference, Pathway to Sustainability. I'm Sally French from Cal Recycles Tire Program, and I will be facilitating the conference. I hope you enjoyed day one yesterday. I just wanted to remind everyone to hold your questions until all the panel members have completed their presentations. We're going to move into session seven, which is trends in California tire recycling and markets. We have Ed Boysen, principal of Boysen Consulting. He has over 30 years of multidisciplinary experience focused on expanding and strengthening the U.S. recycling industry. Ed has supported Cal Recycles Tire Program since 2006, including leading 14 consecutive annual market studies. Ed's academic background is in physics and engineering. Please welcome Ed Boysen. I'm going to present basically the findings from our report uh, covering 2021. It's called the Waste Tire Market Report 2021. Um, if you're interested in getting the full report, you can Google Cal Recycle, comma, you guessed it, Waste Tire Report 2021, and, and it should come right up. Um, I want to thank everyone in the industry, many of you here in the room who provided information to us, responded to our surveys, and talked with us about trends, uh, and also Cal Recycle staff who give us access to data and uh, databases, and then especially my partners, Denise Kennedy, who's our main uh, liaison to industry, and Randy Russell in the back there, who does uh, research support as well. So uh, what I have planned is a few slides on uh, the infrastructure in the state for scrap tire management and recycling, and then I'll discuss the market trends, and I'll finish up with a, just a couple words about the outlook for recycling. This slide, uh, in my mind, <laughs> the, the discussion yesterday with the processors um, sort of summed up what I intended to say with this slide. I mean, the bottom line is we heard all about the disruptions that uh, this industry, like others, have uh, gone through over the last few years with the economic roller coaster ride we've been on. We heard about the difficulties hiring and retaining staff and the pressure on wages, uh, the supply chain disruptions that have been somewhat selective, but they have impacted the companies from time to time. Um, and we heard about now rising interest rates, risk of inflation, some disruptions and risks and uncertainty with the war in Ukraine, et cetera. But the main message was that the companies are resilient and they are adapting. And when you come right down to it, they're, they're thriving. Um, and just as an example, uh, last year, recycling tonnage did go up about 11%. And the retread industry had one of its best years ever. Um, I've got a few slides with maps that I'd like to go through, and these are from our uh, tire drive product catalog, the online catalog, um, and just to describe some of the infrastructure. So these uh, 17 facilities, uh, we term them tire drive material feedstock suppliers. These are the processors that handle the vast majority of all the tires generated in California, and several of these folks were on the panel yesterday. Um, they... Uh, there have been some ownership changes uh, over the last year or two and some new investments in recycling that should bode well. Um, these are the 16 tire drive product manufacturers in California that are currently in the catalog. They make a wide variety of products, uh, roofing, flooring, ADA transitions, uh, traffic devices, and uh, myriad component parts like pipe couplings, things like that. And we'll have a panel later this morning uh, that will uh, involve uh, several of those folks. These are eight TDP installers, companies that uh, directly take tire drive materials from the processors and install products, uh, the, the five or six that are listed here. Um, there's probably more out there. If, if you know of someone who should be on the list, and this goes with all of these, please let us know. Um, and then these are the tire drive paving materials and product suppliers. These are 16 companies that own and operate the blending units that are used to make um, a binder for rubber uh, hot mix asphalt or other products like uh, slurry seals or chip seals. And then finally, this is the same map that Denise showed yesterday with the 36 retreaders, uh, always changing constantly. So I just walked through 96 California companies that are involved in uh, scrap tire management or recycling. And I didn't mention the 1,200 or more uh, registered uh, waste tire haulers. So it's it's a robust industry. And like I said, it's thriving amid the disruption. Um, I want to give a shout out to the catalog. This is Denise's project. She uh, maintains the catalog. These are some of the categories that you'll find in there. Uh, there is technical product information, specifications, videos, 
the maps I just looked at, in addition to the directories with contact information, there are case studies. Uh, you'll find a copy of the report that I'm summarizing right now in there. So take a look at it. The URL is at the bottom of the page there. But again, if you Google CalRecycle, TDP catalog, uh, you can get there in a couple of clicks. Okay, let's talk about trends a little bit. Um, so we documented a total of uh, just about 552,000 tons of waste tires and used tires generated in uh, 2021 in these diverse categories. Um, we uh, also documented uh, using California, when California defines recycling, uh, anything involving fuel or alternative daily cover at landfills uh, and a couple other categories that don't involve tires are excluded. Uh, and that's in contrast to uh, John's presentation yesterday at the national level and some other states. So what's included in recycling um, are the retreads, the used tires. It's kind of a broad definition in that sense that it includes reuse. Tire derived aggregate used in civil engineering, uh, the crumb and ground rubber applications, and then other recycling, which is like pressed products, um, like dock bumpers and some other things like agricultural applications, things like that. All told, uh, the recycling tonnage went up about 11% in 2021 over 2020, but the recycling rate fell about 1.7% because overall generation went up. And uh, this chart shows how those markets have evolved over the since 2009, 12 or 13 years. And if you just look at the total that I just mentioned, um, the total tonnage documented uh, in our surveys went up 15% from 2020, between 2020 and 2021. But if you compare it from 2019 to 2021, it's a 7% rise. So it's it's that COVID year of 2020. It wasn't too dramatic, but it's definitely a blip that kind of tweaked some of the charts I'm going to show you. But other than that, if you look at this, there isn't that much change over time. Uh, the top five categories are those recycling categories I just mentioned. Um, and if you look at those, you know, it's, you can't see it in detail on this chart, but there's not that much fluctuation. They're fluctuating within a fairly narrow band. And then the purple uh, in the middle, that's the in-state tire drive fuel. And it had been very, very stable for quite some time, the most stable and profitable market segment, I think, by far. But then in the last couple of years, there's been changes. And I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then where you really see the variability is uh, between export, the dark green, and gray is disposal, which tend to have an inverse relationship. When one's up, the other's down. It's not always exactly that simple, but if you look over time, it, it does work out that way. So I'm gonna go into a couple of these in a little more detail. Uh, first of all, disposal uh, was up 45% last year, and that was over another 45% increase the year before. Uh, it's really been an abrupt change in our market trends. We documented uh, just about 250,000 tons, um, and that's uh, up, I'm sorry, up 62%, and it was up 60-ish percent the year before, and it's 45% of the total amount of waste tires. Um, the chart on the bottom, uh, you can't really count on the numbers there, but I'm using it because of the trend. That is for select landfills that handled, uh, that accepted the bulk of the tires that were disposed, and it's based only on the state's manifest system. Um, when we do our numbers for the report, we do surveys, we look real closely at that data and we tweak it to make it as accurate as possible. So this we haven't done that with these data, but these are monthly reports from the manifest system and they show the trend. And it basically suggests that disposal probably peaked in October of 2021 um, and, is, and is coming down, but obviously still staying high. And here's the flip side of that chart. This is the exported TDF and uh, waste tire bales, and then a separate type of the bale spec, which is a, a baled truck tire tread. Um, in total, we documented 43,700 tons in 2021. That was 8% of the total. And that was down 45%. And it's the flip side of disposal. It was down about 45%. I think it was 48 the year before that. So it's really taking a nosedive. And um, that had a lot to do. We didn't hear that much about it yesterday. We heard about transportation issues, but the issues at the port have been especially problematic. Uh, long waits for drivers getting into the port, um, consequently increasing transportation costs. And then at the port itself, uh, surcharges for high fuel, uh, logistical challenges, that the difficulty of securing a container and a slot on a ship. 
And all of those economics complicating the overall transaction and the attractiveness of that to buyers overseas for the TDF and the bales. So it's been quite a disruption, it's a pretty tough time for anyone involved in export. And that's one of the things that has, has driven it down. The blue line there is the TDF uh, exported, and that's been over the last several years, mainly going to Japan and Korea. But the Korean market has apparently stopped, and they're, they're emphasizing in-country supplies now, and it may not come back. Uh, material is moving to Japan, but at a far lower rate than it had been. And then the red line at the bottom are those bales. And you can see that they've kind of fluctuated for a while. Uh, this came up yesterday. There was a time uh, several years ago when they were flowing to uh, Vietnam and we believe into China that that has stopped. Um, in recent years, it's been primarily to India and uh, Pakistan, but currently there's very little, if anything, flowing um, for a variety of reasons. Um, In-state TDF, we documented 48,200 tons. That's 9% of the total down about 16% last year. And once again, down about, I forget exactly, I think it was 18% the year before. Um, the, we have three cement kilns in the state that are using TDF of one type or another, either uh, traditional TDF or whole tires. Uh, and also uh, 8,500 tons of this was fiber derived from, from rubber production. And that's the red line at the bottom. The fuel use patterns have been changing. Uh, I'm not able to speak to that in any detail. There might be others in the room who could. Um, I think uh, state regulation and a variety of factors go into that, uh, but that is the, the trend. The kilns told us that they expected TDF demand to go up this year, but I haven't been able to verify that. So again, others in the room probably have a better handle on that. And then uh, Denise and uh, David did a great job yesterday talking about retreads. Um, we estimated, this is a very difficult segment to quantify. Uh, we do it in a number of ways, but we estimated that the uh, total production was up about 20% in 2021, a really good year and still going strong this year. And uh, I, David and Denise talked about some of the reasons, uh, basically the industry being very well positioned during the COVID year when new tire manufacturing was disrupted um, and uh, the retraders were able to take that opportunity and then also the imposition of the tariffs in China. And then uh, David also mentioned that I thought I found interesting the um, idea that in an inflationary period, some companies, com some segments like retrading may actually benefit uh, due to the, their competitive nature. Tire-derived aggregate, we uh, used in civil engineering applications, we documented 6,600 tons, just 1% of the total. Um, and you can see that it's, it's extremely variable uh, over time. Uh, the use in landfill-related projects, mainly uh, regarding gas-related projects and sometimes road construction, is relatively stable. It's still variable, but it's, it's regular. That's the blue line in the middle there. And last year, this was all at uh, landfills. And uh, the red line are projects not at landfills, which include um, vibration mitigation in uh, light rail systems, uh, stormwater mitigation, and uh, roadslide repair, among others. Looking at Joaquin Wright and Stacy uh, Patnod in the back, uh, that's their program. Um, and uh, that was down to zero last year. However, we do expect an uptick. Uh, much of this is grant funded, not, not all of it. Um, but there are two new projects at LA Metro that um, I was just talking with uh, Nate. Um, I read that they were projecting 9,700 tons over the life of those projects, but maybe it might even tick a little higher than that. Um, and there's also new projects in Riverside County, at two landfills that have been uh, using the material pretty regularly. Crumb and ground rubber uh, also had a good year. Um, part of it, I think the markets, uh, well, they were mixed in some ways, but might, some of this might have to do with that down year and then an up year and inventories being uh, available. But we documented 70,900 tons. That's 13% of the total. That, that was the highest category other than disposal. Um, and that was up 40% 40, 40 from uh, 2020. Um, about 70, 72 to 92 million pounds. I'm going to shift to pounds because that's how this market segment uh, tends to talk about it. Uh, 72 to 92 million pounds used in paving. Uh, we had the excellent session yesterday, uh, learned about uh, Caltrans state use and local use. Um, molded and other products, like I mentioned before, the other would include things like pervious pavements, 
uh, other applications like that, about 27 to 34 million pounds. And then turf infill, the use of crumb rubber in synthetic turf athletic fields is still a significant market, um, although much lower than it used to be and much lower than it could, could be. The, the industry, by all accounts, is having a banner year, uh, uh, construction of new fields and replacement of fields that have reached the end of their life is going strong, but the percentage of those projects that use crumb rubber as infill is going down, and we'll hear more, we'll hear, we will hear more about that uh, later, I guess this afternoon, um, in, a, in a session at the end of the day. Um, and then ground rubber, I should say we define crumb rubber, we make this distinction that I don't think John made in the national study. Crumb rubber is a quarter inch or smaller, usually a lot smaller. Uh, and we define ground rubber as high, larger than a quarter inch and usually smaller than one inch used in projects like uh, ballistics applications and landscaping and um, blanking on another one, but there are a couple others, playgrounds, but not as much as it used to be. Last couple slides. I wanted to uh, say a little bit about the state support for the markets and Noel Davis somewhere here will be talking about the grants in some detail. Where are you, Noel? <laughs> okay, <laughs> wouldn't you know it? Um, he'll, he'll be covering the grants in detail, but I just want to talk about the context to the market. So the rubberized pavement grant program uh, reimburses local agencies uh, subject to a lot of terms, but um, for rubber rubberized hot mix asphalt use and also chip seals. And what we did, uh, we did this last spring, we looked at closed cycles going back several years because the grants are usually good for two or three years and you don't really know what actually happened until they're done and closed. So this is sort of historic. And over time, the average has been about 9 million pounds a year being supported by the TRP is the acronym, the rubberized grant program, the rubberized pavement grant program. And then, Caltrans, we, we heard about that yesterday. Uh, long story short, on average, they've been using about 52 million pounds over the last seven or eight years per year. And so if you add those together, that's 61 million pounds. And I, I mentioned that our estimate of the total market was 72 to 92 million pounds. So that would suggest that between 66 and 85% of that market was supported either by Cal, Cal Recycle Grants or Caltrans direct use. And they do have a mandate for that use. Um, the tire drive product grant program has been scaled back a little bit. It's now offered every other year. Uh, it tends to be focused more on ground rubber projects, landscape related, although also some bike paths that use a, a smaller spec. Um, and long story short, on average, about 2.7 million pounds currently being supported by that program. And that's compared to uh, 5 to 9 million was our estimate. Um, so that equates to 30 to 50% roughly of that market being supported by that grant program. That's a relatively small market segment. And then the tire incentive program, which I think we'll hear more about later today, uh, provides direct uh, per pound payments to manufacturers of tire drive products under certain conditions uh, that range from 10 to 50 cents, depending on the product type and the application. Um, on average, that program has been supporting 10.9 million pounds. Um, sometimes all, with all of these, they vary. And that program in particular in 2021 was closer to 20 million pounds um, uh, of closed grants that were documented. And that is primarily the molded and other category. And I mentioned that uh, we estimated a total of 27 to 34 million pounds going into that segment. So if you do the math, um, that suggests that the program is supporting 32 to 40 percent on average of that market segment, although sometimes it's been a lot higher, maybe as much as 80 percent. And then finally, uh, the tire drive aggregate, if in terms of pounds for similarity here, 9.4 million pounds on average, that's actually more than what was used in 2021. Over time, I think that grant program probably supports 80 to 90% of the TDA used in the state. There are some landfills using the material on a regular basis. And I gather some of the uh, applications like the LA Metro project may be using some material outside of the grants as well. A couple more things I wanna mention. Um, there's something called the uh, SABREC, the State Agency Buy Recycled Campaign. This is a state law. It's been around quite a while. It's evolved a little bit. And it basically requires state agencies to buy recycled content products uh, at certain levels and in certain conditions. Um, and the, it covers all types of products, but it includes retreads and tire drive products as a, as a broad category. 
Um, the target, the targets vary by product. For retreads, the target is 50%. And uh, this came up in yesterday's meeting. I'll just repeat what I said then that um, for retreads, the actual compliance was 8%. And there's a whole discussion about that that we could have. Um, it was $682,000 of retreads purchased out of a total of $7.8 million on, on new tires. And in the TDP category, the compliance was 72%, very close to that 75 target. Um, not huge numbers, though, in my mind, $466,000 of TDPs purchased out of a total of 645 uh of similar products, if you will, in the, in the categories that we were reported. The reporting categories are important here. Um, I want to mention in uh, back, Michelle Ceballos of CalRecycle is uh, familiar with this program if you have any questions about it. The last thing I want to mention is uh, AB661 was uh, passed this year, and it strengthens the SABRIC program in a number of ways. But the, the main thing I want to mention is that um, when this goes into effect, um, if fitness and quality are equal, this law now says that a state agency needs to buy the recycled content product if the price is no more than 10% higher. Uh, the, the law probably says it in a different way, but that's the gist. And I want to do one last shout out before I move on. Um, Jim Latanner is here, uh, also of CalRecycle. He manages their uh, recycling loan program. It got a new infusion of funds last year, 50 million. That's for all types of products, not, not just tires. Um, and there's some changes in the program as well. They've loosened the collateralization a little bit, uh, which if you're familiar with the program, that will be a benefit to everybody. Um, and the interest rate is uh, subprime at this point. So it's an attractive interest rate. And I would encourage you to talk to Jim if you have any interest in that at all. Okay, last slide. Um, I mentioned this uh, before, I think that recycling tons were up 11% to 193,000 tons and uh, the rate actually down because of the increase in generation. Um, this purple line on the top is the diversion rate from landfill. And you can see it's been quite high. It was, uh, I think it exceeded 90% back in 2012. Um, that is a the, sort of the generous measure, if you will. It includes everything that's not going into a landfill, including exports, TDF, et cetera. The green line is the recycling rate line. And you can see how that's fluctuated it, like I said, in, within a pretty tight boundary. Uh, holding its own as the overall generation goes up pretty much, you know, not, not quite over time. And then the green are the recycling tons, the, the red are the otherwise diverted and the blue is the disposal. And you can see the, the last couple of years, last few years going straight up. Um, because you know, last year was a good year because we have some new investments, um, we would expect, and, and also just from what we've heard from the markets that there's room to believe that uh, we'll see another uptick in recycling in the short term, uh, this year and next year, uh, certainly plausible, might be significant. But in terms of transformational growth that will really uh, move the ball forward in a huge way, we've heard discussion of this already, the need for new markets, uh, more feedstock conversion, getting existing manufacturers to shift over, uh, doing things like whether it's through devulcanization or other technologies to open up new markets, uh, there's a need for that, uh, and, and we're not seeing that on the horizon in the immediate future, but hopefully the ground is being laid. And if you have thoughts on what CalRecycle could do to help make that happen, uh, this has been mentioned too, but I'll give a shout out. November 30th this month is the first hearing to uh, develop the next five-year plan for the tire program, and uh, Sally will be running a workshop that day, and uh, you should tune in and chime in, and I will leave it at that. Do we have any questions for Ed? Randy, do you have a question virtual? Yes, we have one online question from Charles Bach. He writes, how much is known about the overseas tire markets and whether the uses are appropriate and or comparable to state regulations? I can't really speak to that. I will say that we assume, well, the TDF is going to TDF applications that are, I think, uh, one based on anecdotal information, I want to be really careful here, are regulated, you know, in Japan primarily right now. Um, the the bales you cannot speak to, and you know, Denise, maybe others might want to uh, say something about that. But you know, our understanding is that they generally are going for fuel uses. Uh, it was mentioned yesterday that years ago the material going into China. Uh, I guess uh, John mentioned this that uh, 
our understanding was that some of that was going into pyrolysis related uh, applications, and I would venture to guess how those are operated. So we, it's not documented. Any comment on that? Any other questions? Okay, let's give a okay. big applause for Ed Boysen. <laughs>